Thanks for joining us for the Member Excite presentation. The Member Excite presentation is informative, interesting to the audience, and showcases the strengths of the presenter as an entrepreneur and their area of expertise. It's not a sales pitch, it's a 10 minute educational and insightful exploration into what they do. And of course, it's exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our BX Excite presenter today. Parul Banga from WAG Accounting to present to us on Nailing Your Business Tax Return. What makes a business thrive? And how do people become rich? These have been the questions that Parul asks herself every day. And more importantly, what can this business owner do to grow? So today, Parul will talk about a topic which can help all of us members here at BX. She will talk about the best way to do your business tax return and how to get the best outcome for yourself, regardless of whether you do it yourself or through a tax agent. And everybody, please give Parul a big warm welcome. So hi, everyone. Today, I'm going to be speaking on a topic which is going to be of use to everyone. And I will also share some resources which everyone can use. So I've split my topic into five parts and I will touch on each of them briefly as I go along. So this is us. Um, I'm a registered tax agent, a CPA public practice uh, license holder. And the motto of my business is your success is our business because I simply love to see my clients thriving. And I start with topic one. If you're a business owner, you have to lodge a tax return, even if your in income is below the 18,200 limit. There are a whole lot of reasons for that. But, so, but even if you have made a loss or you are a sole trader, you must do that. You must lodge your business tax return and you must do that on the separate business schedule, which is in the sep supplementary section number 15, if you're using a paper tax return. Number two, how much tax do I pay? So it's always great to contribute to the economy but broadly, if you're earning up to $20,000 a year, you pay no tax. On top of that, your rate is 19%. That is, it means that you contribute one day's work to the tax office. And um, if you work five days in a week, if you earn more than $180,000, you're working half the week for paying tax. Hmm. So, um, but the tax laws have a way out for people who are looking to pay less tax. And this is where a good accountant comes in. If you spend the money in ways laid down by the ATO, you can cut down on your tax bill and improve your own life. So this is what, um, this is what uh, a person who's earning 180,000 and above, this is what their um, tax, tax figures look like. It's the, the green part. You have to give away that much to the tax office. Then topic number three is how to get it right. So I love zero. I think zero, you, once you connect your bank account and your credit cards to zero, you won't miss any transaction. But if you're not yet there, uh, if you're not there yet, it's, it's all, all right, even if you have an Excel spreadsheet, and I'm going to show you a beautiful spreadsheet, which, can you see it? Yep, we can see it now. All right, so this is a beautiful spreadsheet, and it's got income on the top, top half of the spreadsheet, and it's got, like, it's categorized into all sorts of income, like you can have three sources of income. You can have income from the sale of assets, bank interest, various other things like, you know, your, um, money which you've raised from a loan, et cetera, and then all the expenses at the bottom. And they're pretty much an exhaustive list. If you keep doing that month by month, at the end of the year, the data flows through in this beautiful spreadsheet, in this beautiful summary, and you will be able to do your taxes without any hassles at all. And another tip, as you go uh, month by month, Every time you note an expense or an income down, you can just hyperlink it to um, the invoices which you have scanned um, 
uh, scanned just so that at the end of the year and you you save all of this in your google drive folder and at the end of the year you just um, send the link to your accountant it'll make life so much easier for them and making sure that you don't miss out on any expense so if you if you would like to have a copy of the spreadsheet just email me and i can send it across to you there you go deductions yeah. for working from home so there are a whole lot of deductions which are available for people who are working from home and the first thing to do is to work out the percentage of your dedicated home office space let's say for example your home office space measures 5 square meters and your home is 35 square meters so you will work out your percentage of business use which is 14% and this is the percentage of rent electricity cleaning heating etc which you can pick up also you can pick up the cost of furnishings fittings computer equipment faxes printers and any dedicated equipment which you will use and keep in the office so don't miss this out but if you don't have a dedicated space then just go by the 52 cents per hour um um uh, home office expense uh, deduction which is allowed by the ato the next one is car expenses this is another area in which a lot of people make mistakes so there are just two ways in which you can claim your car expenses one is the cents per kilometer and the other one is a logbook method um so the ato allows you to choose whichever is better for you so you can work out your claim in both the ways and see see which one gives you a bigger deduction and you can go in for that so it's um as far as i'm concerned i do less than 5000 kilometers because i work from home but still i keep a logbook because using a logbook means i can get deductions on insurance registrations car wash depreciation fuel and servicing so that really works out very well uh the next one is your super this is an excellent way to reduce your tax if you've been keeping your spreadsheet properly then on the 1st of june you should be able to see how much profit you've made and if your business has done well and if you've made good money think of think of putting away some in your super so what you need to do is call up your super fund and ask them how much tax deductible contribution you can make in this financial year do this no later than the 1st of june and then you can decide how much money you wish to contribute without damaging your cash flow uh remember if you don't have your first home you can withdraw money from super to pay for your deposit so it's not like your money is going to get locked in there forever and also if you are over 55 or nearing 55 you can begin a transition to retirement pension so you can pull your money out of super at that stage as well and if you have made all of these contributions you can even make a spouse contribution to get additional tax offset so i guess um that's that's all for today and i um if there are any questions i'll be happy to answer fantastic parul that was superb very very extensive and um Thank big you. round of applause for parul and uh, those pie charts those graphs at the beginning really scared me but i loved your spreadsheet very Thank very you. in depth so i'd urge everybody to contact parul to get a copy of that spreadsheet and super annuation always seems to be a tricky one There's so much more that you can do with super that we don't think that we can do, isn't it? That's correct. Question. Um has anybody got any questions? Yes. Yes. Uh, Quick, go Karina, go for it. Carol, did did you say that you can access your superannuation for a house deposit? Yep, yep. But only you? for your first home, your yeah. first home. Okay, I hadn't heard that. It's called Yeah, I never heard that one either. First home super saver scheme. first home um yeah so f h s s if you type that on the internet um it'll come up so basically what that means is that you can withdraw um up to 10% like whatever uh, withdraw the money for your super like for your deposit for the home from your super and that's um, not going to be taxable Wow, so all you need weird. to do is just get get in touch with your super fund and then ask them how much money you can withdraw from your account and then yeah just go for it amazing well then any other questions for parol uh, yes ellen uh yes hi parol that was fantastic as much as tax can be interesting <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, but one thing I just wanted to ask a little bit of clarification on, something I have heard, maybe the rules have changed, uh, is that if you're claiming business expenses within your home, which obviously everyone wants to do now because we've all done a portion of working from home, um, that if you then sell your home in the future, it's up for capital gains tax. Is that correct? Yep, absolutely. So that, yep. that's why I said you can claim a portion of your rent if you're on rent. But if you're on your if you own your own home and you're paying a mortgage and similarly, like you would have to in the event that you sell off, it's it's a very difficult and a long winding con, uh, calculation which you make. Oh gosh. <laughs> Sorry, but the but the sum and substance is that on that percentage of the house that you've been claiming a, a business deduction for, for example, is the fourteen percent in my example. If fourteen percent of your house is business use and you've been claiming mortgage payment on that, then um, you know at the time when you're going to be selling your property, you would be that portion of your house would be eligible for you know, capital gains tax, but then you would have to multiply it by all the years that you've been living in the house and how many have you been using for business, etc. So it's, it's a difficult calculation, but mm. yeah, that's correct. Okay. So only if you're on rent, you. it works out well. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, any other questions for Parul? Yes, I'd like yes. to ask a Good question. Uh, Parul, you talked about the apportionment method where, say, you use so many square metres of your home. But what about, like, the bathroom and the kitchen? Because, obviously, I use those partly for work and partly for personal. So can I include them in the work part of the calculation? <laughs> Yeah, that's an excellent question. But my answer to that would be that when we're dealing with the ATO, they always go with a very conservative, the more conservative argument would be adopted by them. Like they would say that you would be using the bathroom in your home anyway, even if you didn't run your business. So, you know, probably that they would come up with something like this. So, um, just use the specific area, which is your office area. And that is all like, you couldn't say that, you know, unless you have a bathroom, which is specifically dedicated towards the clients who are gonna be visiting you and um, you couldn't, but you could say that, well, maybe 20%, 20% would be business use or whatever, some such thing, but uh, yeah, just go on the more conservative side. And I would say that just, claim for the area that you're working out from. That's it in order, yeah. And, and keep records, always keep records about how you're calculating your, your business area and how you're calculating your expenses because in the event that you're audited, you should, you should have something to show like.